What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Xbox 360 tutorial. So once again, we're taking another look at the software-only hypervisor exploit for the Xbox 360 because there's been a number of improvements here that can be used to make it easier to run multiple homebrew applications with this exploit. So just to recap, we can use this exploit here to basically run homebrew applications and unsigned code on our Xbox 360s on a retail console without any kind of hardware level hack required. No JTAG or RGH required for this. Although there are a number of downsides, it is a tethered exploit, so you have to rerun the exploit whenever you restart the console. And not only that, of course, it takes about 20 minutes for each attempt to run through before you have to restart and try again. And it only has a 30% success rate. You also shouldn't use this if you are connecting to Xbox Live or you plan to use Xbox Live on the console because this will likely get your console banned by running homebrew applications on it. So all of that should be considered before attempting to run this. Now, the reason why I'm covering this again is that we now have access to this free my XE uh, XEX file, which is an Xbox 360 executable designed to apply freedom unlocking patches to the kernel and hypervisor by Emma or Invoxy Play Games. So this will basically unlock the ability of your console to be able to launch homebrew applications like XEX Menu from the dashboard whereas previously when you just ran the xbox 360 bad update it would allow you to run homebrew applications but not from the dashboard they would still show up as corrupted so this will actually patch it so that you can now load things like xcx menu from the dashboard without having to burn it to a disk in order to be able to launch it from there so that is the big improvement made here and it makes it much easier to switch between multiple homebrew apps once you have xcx menu up and running with this so that is what I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up here in this video. So the prerequisites for this is that you need to have the game Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, which is the current game that is supported. You also need to be on dashboard version 17559. You can check your dashboard version by heading into the settings, going to system, console settings and system info. If you hover over system info, you'll see your dashboard version. You can see mine is 17559. If you need to update to version 17559, you can just go ahead and download the system update to a USB drive from xbox.com. Download link will be in the description. And from there, you can just open up the zip file and extract the dollar sign system update folder to the root of a FAT32 formatted USB. And then once that's copied over, you can then plug it into your Xbox and you will get the update prompt to update to 17559. Okay, so now we need to get everything downloaded. So we're going to download the Xbox 360 bad update, the USB zip and the tools.zip. And we're also going to, from Invoxy Play Games, download Free My XE by going to the latest release here and downloading the zip file. And then you can also download any other homebrew applications that you want to run with this. So I've got Aurora downloaded, XEX Menu, of course, which is definitely recommended here, and also SNES 360, an emulator. So I've got those downloaded. I'll leave a link to XEX Menu and Aurora down in the video description. Okay, so now we just need to prepare the USB drive. So make sure your USB again is in FAT32 format. If you don't know how to format your USB in FAT32, you can do it on the Xbox itself. You have the option there to format the drive in the storage settings that will format it in FAT32 format and set up the directory structure for you. Open up the Xbox 360 bad update retail zip, go into Tony Hawk's American Wasteland and copy the contents into the root of the USB drive, not inside any existing folders. So go ahead and copy those files in there. The next thing we're going to do is install XEX Menu. So we're going to open up XEX Menu. This is version 1.2. So what we need to do is go into the content folder. Now this might be hidden. So make sure you go into view and go down to show and just make sure that hidden items is ticked so that you will see that folder. And then from here, what we can do is go into the content folder, go into the 000 folder. And then in here, we're going to copy the code 9999 folder into this location. So we're just gonna copy and paste it in here. And of course the important one here is free my XE. So we're gonna make sure we grab this XEX file and this goes into the bad update payload on the USB. You can delete the default.xex file that's already in there. And we're basically replacing it with this free my XE.xex. So we're gonna copy that in there instead and rename it to default.xex. And then that should be good. Now this XEX is already pre-patched to work with the exploit. Your homebrew apps most likely won't be. So let's get those installed. So SNES 360, I'm gonna copy that to the root of the USB and then any other homebrew applications that you want to run. So Aurora, we'll create a new folder on the USB called Aurora. And we'll also extract all the files into this folder. Again, you'll need 7-zip or WinRAR in order to extract these .rar archives. 
or .7-zip archives. So make sure you have either 7-zip or WinRAR installed to extract those and we should be good to go. So if we refresh, you can see we've got everything here. So these homebrew applications will not launch by default. You'll get, you'll get a game error because they're not patched to work with this exploit. There might be future versions that come out that target this exploit where they'll already be pre-patched. But at the moment, you'll need to patch them manually yourself. That's where the tools.zip comes in. If you open up this zip file, you'll find the XE patcher and you can extract that out to your desktop. And then if we open this up, right click in the same folder and open in terminal. And that will open up a PowerShell window in the same location. And we're going to type in dot forward slash XEX tool dot EXE space dash M R dash R A. And then the location of the XEX file to patch, which in this case is Aurora.XEX. So we can just drag it in here and press enter and that will patch the executable. And then we can do the same thing with our uh, SNES 360 executable. So I'll just press the up arrow key on my keyboard to re-enter the command and then copy over the file path to this executable and I'll patch that one as well. And now we should be able to load those using this exploit. There we go, successfully wrote altered XEX. So we should be all up and running here. So now that we have everything copied over to our USB, we should be all good to load these homebrew apps using this exploit. So all we're going to do is eject the drive and plug it into the Xbox 360. Okay, so at this point, you want to put in your copy of Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. And then, of course, we want to sign into the profile that's on the USB drive. So we're going to select player one on MU, which is memory unit. And of course, I would also recommend heading into your network settings and disconnecting from your wireless network and making sure you don't have a LAN cable connected just so that you can prevent it trying to connect to Xbox Live while you're running this. Although, of course, if you do have history of running homebrew apps on your profiles, you could still end up getting console banned later on if you try to connect to Xbox Live in the future, which is why I don't recommend trying to use this if you are planning to use Xbox Live on your console. But anyway, so we're going to run uh, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland here and get this up and running. And from here, we're going to scroll down to high score slash free skate. We're going to say no to that message select a skater, select play level, scroll up to the bottom level, which is created park, press A on that and then load park. And then we'll say yes to load. And importantly here, you need to select the USB storage device, which has uh, the save file to hack the Xbox called hack Xbox. So we'll press A on that. And then finally, we are going to tell it to play park. So we'll press A to play park. And that's now loading the exploit on the console. So at this point, you want to start a 20 minute timer. And if it's still on this loading screen after 20 minutes, then it's not worked and you'll have to turn the console off, turn it back on again and rerun the exploit again and keep doing that until it eventually works. Uh, you'll know it works because you'll get a prompt appearing on screen. Also, the LEDs change to indicate the different stages of the exploits. When you first run it, I think it's the first two LEDs, player one and player two that are lit up and then it changes as it goes through but you'll know that it's running because once it runs successfully, all four LEDs on the front of the console should be lit up to indicate that the exploit has loaded successfully. Now you might just get a black screen after it loads successfully, but once you reconnect your controller, you should get this message pop up on screen saying it's about to start patching the HV and kernel, also gives you your CPU key. So you can just press A to that message and then it should say it has successfully patched it. And then we can press A on that message as well and it will bring us back to the dashboard. But what that should allow us to do is run XEX menu from the My Games section. So if we go into the My Games section, XEX menu should be there. You can see I have a ton of different things installed. And that's because I also use this hard drive with my RGH. And I have a lot of games in like GOD format, games on demand format in here. And none of those games were showing up previously uh, with just the Xbox 360 bad update. But with the free my XE patch, all of these games are now displayed along with XEX menu itself. I have two versions because I have one version on the hard drive and one on the USB, but you will just have the one on the USB most likely. So you can just go ahead and select XEX menu to launch it. Once it does start up, you can press RB to switch to the drives. And if it's not on USB by default, which it should be, you can press X and then select USB zero to get to the USB drive. And then you can just launch any other homebrew apps from here. Let's say we want to launch Aurora. We can press A on the Aurora folder and then go to the Aurora XEX file and press A to launch it. And that will launch us into Aurora. Aurora does take a long time to start up initially when it's the first time boot. So just give it a while to boot up. Once it boots up here, you can see we've got uh, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland showing up here and we can add other homebrew apps to scan. 
uh, by pressing start and heading to manage content and then adding a path and selecting the option to change the path. And then of course, from there, we're going to just select the USB drive by hovering over it and pressing Y. And that will allow us to select the USB and it will scan for any applications that it finds on there. And it should find our SNES emulator along with Aurora itself. And of course the free my XE, uh, which is probably not going to recognize properly, but that will get those added there so that we can then launch them from Aurora too. So I can launch the SNES emulator. And you can see that it's also up and running and working. And of course, we get the little achievements that we have successfully unlocked Homebrew. So that's what we want to see right there. So we can also launch games with this too. Uh, you can patch the games with XEX Tool. Um, although I was able to launch a few games that did not require that. So I was able to launch, say, Geometry Wars uh, from the dashboard here, which is in games on demand format. And I was able to get that launched on the console. So we can launch games, we can launch homebrew, we can launch emulators here using this exploit. Again, it only has a 30% success rate. You're going to have to be retrying it multiple times. It takes 20 minutes to wait for it to run to completion. And if it's not loaded, you have to reboot and try again. And of course, after doing all this, once you do get it up and running, if you restart the console, you will have to run it again. So it's still not an ideal exploit, really. Obviously, it's better to have an RGH if you can get one. But if you do not have access to an RGH, you have maybe like a Winchester board or something, then yeah, you can actually go ahead and get homebrew running using a software only exploit, which is pretty awesome. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.